Greetings! I am Anthony Alp Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. We are not only the Black Buddhist Voice in America, we are the Black Buddhist Voice in the world. My lecture today is called The Black Buddhist Origins of Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus Christ was black and he was Buddhist you will find the fact that out of black Buddhist history, you will find the origin of Christ. See, we black people know that white people rewrote black history. Most black people today are making so much money and so many black people have gained so much from their knowledge and association with Christ that even black people would rather kill you than accept the true reality of Jesus Christ and the Christian religion. The man known as the Buddha was an amazing man. He was an amazing man because multitudes of people, when they hear about the Buddha calling, they could just touch him. The same story that you read about Christ that is the story of the Buddha. You see, the story of the birth, death, and resurrection comes directly from Mahayana Buddhism. The story of the Buddha's enlightenment, whereas he went into the desert and faced the temptation of the devil, in Buddhism this story is called the temptation of Mara. And this became a sense, uh, this became in Christianity called the Sermon on the Mount, and in Buddhism it's called the Temptation of Mara. The Buddha had 12 disciples, Christ had 12 disciples. You see, the same identical story of Christ and Buddha is the same story. Now, let us go into the story of Jesus Christ. See, the story of Jesus Christ comes directly from Buddhism. I just want you to Google and the Google the Buddha virgin birth, Google the Buddha resurre resurrection, and go into the birth of Christ and the birth of Buddha, and you'll find that the birth of Buddha is on December the 25th. Also the birth of Krishna, because the Krishnas and the Buddhas was one and the same people. Now, this is not something that Anthony L. Elmore made up. What we know today as Christianity came directly from Buddhism. The Buddhist religion that there are two people you must understand in history. There was, there is Buddha and there was Krishna. See, there was a separation between the two groups regarding the female principle. Those of you in the proud black Buddhists, one way to help you understand history is for you to look up the word Etruscan, that's E-T-R-U-S-C-A-N, Etruscan. Now, in regards to what we know today as Italy, Italy was founded by black people before there was ever a people called Romans or the Roman Empire, the land we call Italy, was the land of the Etruscans and the Romans built their civilization based on the black Etruscans who were Buddhists and Christians when they move in. Now, you got to look at the time of the Roman Empire. See, the Roman Empire and the time, that's around 29, uh, 28 BC when the Roman Empire emerged. Now, see, there was black Buddhists, but they were not called Buddhists, they were called Gymnosophists. Now, the word Krishna later became known as Christ. Now, when you look at the Catholic Church, now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to Google the Black Madonna. Just Google the Black Madonna. If you Google the Black Madonna, you can look at churches all over Europe, Poland, Russia, Scandinavia, all over, and what you're going to see is that you're going to see this, this 
Mama, Madonna, you're going to see this black woman, and you're going to see this black baby. Now, the reason that you see this is because they were Krishnas, and they were already in Europe because the Krishnas was already there, and that's where you see the black Madonna. You see, Buddha's mama was called Maya, and, 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 and the language today was just called her Mary. Now, quickly, the way that the white people got rid of the Buddha and the way that they changed history is they came up with the white man who was the father of what they call Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. His name was Abraham. See, once you go in and you deal with the myth of Abraham, a lot of stuff is going to become clear to you. See, in order to give you a new and clear understanding of black Buddhist history, we must first separate Buddhism from the myth. See, the reason that you do not know black Buddhist history because black Buddhist history became lost in the myth. See, this is what happened. Mainly a group of white people created a myth. They sold the myth as history and fact, and today people believe the myth and not the facts. If you question the myth, many people would rather kill you regarding the myth rather than relate to the fact. Now, let us talk about the myth. Now, the world's greatest myth is the Christian Bible. See. The name Jesus Christ and what we know as the Bible was created at the Council of Nicaea by King Constantine in 325 AD. Constantine the Great was the ruling spirit at Nicaea and he ultimately decided upon a new God for them. To involve the British factions, he ruled that the name of the great Jewish god, Jesus, he joined with the Eastern Savior God, Krishna. See, Krishna is Sanskrit for Christ. And thus, Jesus Krishna would be the official name of the new Roman God. A vote was taken. And it was with a majority show of hands, 101 votes to 157, that both divinities become one God. Following the long-standing then customs, Constantine used the official gathering in the Roman Apothe's decree to legally deify two deities as one, and did so by democratic consent. The new God was proclaimed and officially ratified by Constantine. Now, at, in 1618, the purely political act of deification effectively legally placed Jesus and Krishna among the Roman gods as one individual composite. The abstraction lent earthly existence to the abrogated doctrines for the emperor's new religion and because there was no letter J in the alphabet until around the ninth century the name subsequently evolved into Jesus Christ. Now we at the proud Black Buddhist World Association practice the Lotus Sutra that evaluate all phenomena in relationship to cause and effect phenomena. We explain in 185 BC is the time of the death of the Black Miriam King was killed by Push Yamitra and they destroyed Buddhism in India. The Brahmins killed the Buddhists and they brought in the whites or the Persians and the religion of India became that of Persia and Brahma. In India, they got rid of the Buddhists and a new religion and people dominate India called the Brahmins or the white Brahmins, the Persians. The Brahmins 
who we know in history, uh, they the Brahmins or the white Brahmins of Persians. The Brahmins we know in history described by British historian Garford Higgins, Higgins as a Brahmin. See, it was a Brahmin. A Brahmin went on to become Abraham. See, Abraham became the father of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Abraham was the religion of Persia and Rome. Now, while Abraham was the religion of Rama and Persia, black people were of the religion of Buddha and Krishna. See, the Buddhists were black and of the tribe of Judah. The black tribe of Judah were of the original Jews. See, we do not have to look very far in history to find the tribe of Judah. See, the tribe of Judah today call themselves Ethiopians. Now, in regards to written history, the Ethiopians have the oldest record of kings and queens in the history of any people in mankind. The Ethiopians came from India into Africa hundreds of years before the Persian Abraham. The Ethiopians were Buddhists and they were called Naga or Naga Buddhists. They had a written document. Right now it's called the Kubra Nagas. The document referenced Naga. Now, in regards to India, the Ethiopians ruled India and the whites got their language of Sanskrit from the Ethiopian language of Gies that is spoken in Ethiopia today. Now, this is what we proud black Buddhists must understand. Buddha Shakyamuni, the historical Buddha, is sometimes called the Lion of Shaka. Now, Shaka is the name of his clan, the Shakas. And he is therefore depicted the seat on a lion throne. The tribe of Judah was a lion. Judah was a group whose southern territory included the city of Jerusalem where the kings who ruled the group whose southern territory included the capital of Jerusalem, whose king ruled. The Romans called the United Israel Judah territory, Judea, after it. And the Jews received their name from that. When you talk about the city of Jew, Jerusalem, we are talking about Buddhists, and the tribe of Judah. I want you to look at the Apodemic Temple in Naga, Sudan, and you will see the snake coming out of the lotus flower, and you will see the lion, and that tells you that there were Buddhists or Judah from the tribe of Shakyamuni Buddha. Shakyamuni is the word Shakyamuni means sage of the Shakas and he was from the lion. The lion was the symbol of the Buddha. So when you see the lion of Judah and you see the lion, that brings the lion and Buddhists all together. Now, let us go back to the Shaka era under the white Kushan king. Kanishka. Now, the Shaka era was from 78 AD to 140 AD. It was King Kanishka and a former Brahmin who created a new form of Buddhism called Mahayana Buddhism. Now, the basis of the Christian Bible or the New Testament of the birth, death, and the resurrection of Christ came directly 
from Mahayana Buddhism. See, in the Bible, the city of Miro was called the land of Kush. And the land of Kush of the Mirotes were Buddhist. Their descendants were actually directly related to Buddha who later became known as Jesus Christ. See, whites changed Jews from Judah and made the white Brahmin Abraham to be the father of the Jews. See, you have to understand the story of the Jews, I'm not sorry, the story of the Buddhists and the Brahmins. See, throughout history or throughout India, the Brahmins and the Buddhists had wars throughout time. Eventually the Brahmins won out and they tell the story of Brahma. See, science clearly connects Buddhism with Western culture. See, when Buddhism moved into Greece, there emerged a new culture called Greco Buddhism, which is a blend of Buddhism and Greek culture, which came to be known today as Hellenism. See, from Buddhism emerged the king and high priest of Judea by the name of Alexander Judea. You see, I can take you to the archaeological and the anthropological and I can take you to the literary science and I can actually take you to Buddhism in the city of Judea. You see, because we have evidence of this. See, there was a king who was the king of Judea. His name was Alexander Janaeus, and he was the Hebrew king of Judea. Now, Alexander Judea practiced Buddhism. He, they lived in a compound. They lived like Buddhists. They called them the Therapudiae, or they were actually the Theravana Buddhists, they lived in a compound. They lived together, they ate certain foods, they practiced together. They were actually literally, literally Buddhists. Now, they were a group of Hebrews, or Jewish people, they called themselves the Essenes. Now, what you have to understand is that the Essenes were the Buddhists. Now, what happened was, there's another group who were the Brahmins, they were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, what happened was, when Alexander Judeus ruled Judea, they got into a big fight with the Brahmins or the Pharisees, and they brought a whole army, and they killed those Buddhists. And what happened, you never heard no more about the Essenes until about 1945 because all of their doctrines was written down and they found them, they found these scrolls of the Essenes and all the doctrines of the Essenes about 1945 near a cave near the Dead Sea. And they called these teachings the Dead Sea Scrolls. So that's how we can bring Judaism and Buddhism together. Now, how did we know that Alexander Janaeus was a Buddhist? Because he printed the Buddhist coins with the eightfold symbol of the Buddhist, the Buddha. So we can show you this sign, we can show you the coins, because Alexander Janaeus was a Buddhist. Now, in order to understand Buddhism, what the Brahmins did, they got rid of the Buddhists by changing the history. So, like in India, what they did was, they came up with a theory called the Aryan Invasion Theory, and they changed the dates of whites coming in, and they changed everything and they told this story about whites coming in and subjugating the black people. This is a false theory called the Aaron Invasion Theory. Now, 
This is what they did in India. Now, in, in the West, what they did in the West, they came up with the story of the Brahman or Abraham and they got rid of the Buddhists. That's how they got rid of the Buddhists, by bringing in Abraham. Now, when you look at the story of Abraham or the Hebrew Bible, this thing does not match archaeology, anthropology, literary science, genetic science. There's no way in the world that the tribe of Buddha could be the tribe of Ram and Persian because they are not the same people. Now, let us go into world history around 100 BC. This would make Buddhism over 500 years. Now, the place we know as Italy was, an, was all black people who ruled Italy they were called the Etruscans. Now, the black Etruscans were Buddhists prior to whites moving into Italy. See, it was not until 27 BC that the Roman Empire emerged based on the foundation of, of the black Etruscans. See, when Rome was established in Ceylon, now known today as Sri Lanka, they had the fourth Buddhist council where they wrote down the Buddhist teachings in a language called Pali and they wrote the Buddhist teachings in the largest volume of Buddhist writings of any religious works, 11 times larger than the Bible. This is called the Pali Canon. Now one of the interesting things in the Pali Canon is in the Pali Canon, you will find the writings or mention of the blind meal. Now the blind meal were a prominent group of Marotis from Sudan as they in this mentioned in the Pali text. And we have the blind meal in African who was in the front ranks of Buddhist texts. Now, let us go back in history when Alexander tried to conquer India. Now, he did not conquer India, but he did bring Buddhists in, in, into Greece, and these Buddhists were called Gymnosophists. You see the picture here of Alexander the Great with the Gymnosophists. These black Buddhists and the Buddhism came into Greece, and they created what is known as Greco Buddhism, which is a blend of Buddhism and Greek culture, which is known today as Hellenism. See, Alexander the Great Generals did not conquer India, but they did conquer Afghanistan, and Alexander's generals, the Alexander's generals later became Buddhists, and they carved Buddhist statues in the mountains that lasted for decades, uh, hundreds of years, until the Taliban blew those Buddha statues up. See, as we mentioned early, the Buddhist religion changed in the Shaka era and that the spirit of the Buddha changed and that King Kanishka and Ashvagosha created new Buddhism based on race, culture, and language, whereas they changed the Buddha from black to white. Not only did they change the Buddha from black to white? Some years later, white people took 100% control of Buddhism. Now, we explained to you that Italy was all black people called the Etruscans. Now, in Italy, there existed a set of Buddhists called the Krishnas. Now, the Krishnas and the Buddhists had split up, and you got the Buddhas, one set of Buddhas, and you got the Krishnas. Now, before there was ever a name called Jesus Christ, they had the Christian religion already in Italy. They were not Christians, but they were Buddhists or Krishnas. Now, this is what I want you to do. All you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is Google the Black Madonna. If you Google the Black Madonna, 
you will see a picture of the Black Madonna in Poland and Switzerland and Russia. Now, how is it that you got a black image of a black mama and a black baby among all these white people? The reason that you had that because they were Krishnas and they were practicing the Buddhist religion of Krishna. Now, you see, this is what happened. In regards to black Buddhists, we would give you the line of demarcation as to where the black Buddhists and black Buddhism ends and where the new world religion begins. It is the new religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam where black Buddhism and black Buddhists ends. See, it was at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD where they destroyed black Buddhists and Buddhism and the white religion began. We have archaeological, anthropological, literary science and genetic science that proves the first Jews to be the black Buddhist tribe of Judah from India. The way that the white people got rid of the black Jews was via creating the white Jewish patriarch by the name of Abraham. See, there were two groups in history that hated each other and have years and years of horrible wars. The fight was between the Brahmins and the Buddhists. One of the ways the Brahmins got rid of the Buddha was making the Buddha a god in the Hindu pantheon. So how they got rid of the Buddha in India they just made the Buddha one of the Hindu gods and they put him in the Hindu pantheon. so they made the Buddha subject to Brahma who was the god and then the Buddha was just a minor god that's how they got rid of him in India. Now when it came to Europe the way they got rid of the Buddha and the way they got rid of Buddhists is that they just came, they integrated the Brahman teachings into the religion. So you had what is called the Old Testament, which is simply Brahman teachings, which come from Abraham. And then you got the New Testament, which is the teachings of the Buddha. But they changed the Buddha into the Sanskrit word Krishna, which means Christ in Sanskrit. So you had Hazel's Krishna, which came, later became known as Jesus Christ. Now, the way the white people got rid of Buddha in Europe was making the Buddha subordinate to God. And they pulled this off. The story of Jesus Christ is the story of Buddha. Just as they incorporated Buddha into the Hindu pantheon, they created the Bible, and they made God the Father and Jesus the Son. In order to pull this scheme off, they used a Brahman, the name of Abraham. The word Abraham means a Brahman. They changed the history of Abraham to make it look like he goes back to 2000 BC. If you go back to 2000 BC, you would not find white people on the world stage, a dominant in the world stage of 2000 BC. See, Abraham or Brahman is the father of Judaism. And he was a Brahma in Persia. Now, the Buddhists were the Naga who used the symbol of the snake. The Brahman vilified the snake and they stole the Buddhist story of Genesis, which was the story of a man and a woman who had sex and multiplied the earth. We show you evidence of the Garden of Eden and Nubia carved in the cave in Africa. They have black or African Americans who call themselves Hebrew or Hebrew Israelites who have no idea of the correct Jewish history. The original Jews were the tribe of Judah and they were black. You can look at the tribe of Abraham of Persia and know that they were not the same tribe or people. What you have are black people who adopted the God 
of Abraham or the Persian and Brahma. This is what happened in India. See, the black Brahmins in India kicked out the black Buddhists. They brought in a white foreigner to subdue and fight their brothers, the black Buddhists. The whites or light skins became the Brahmins and they created the caste system based on color. Whereas the light skins were the Brahmins and the dark skins at the bottom. Those who did not accept the system, they were not any caste, they were called Chandela or the outcast. In regard to Jews, because of the influence of the caste system, Jews became lighter. The Jews were never a single group of people. They separated into sects. See, Buddhist and Krishna, and you had Brahma and Persia, and you had Abraham and Brahma and Persia. See, because the God of Abraham is the God of the Brahmins who practiced the caste system, and the caste system was racist. The God of Buddha and Buddhist is the Lotus Sutra. Namu means to awaken or give reverence. Yo means God or mysterious unfathomable, incomprehensible, or cause. Ho means life's manifestations of the law, or the 3,000 rims of effects. The word rim is a symbol for the lotus, or it means cause, or show flowers and seeds. Gay means effects or manifestations, and menge is a single law of cause and effect. The word kyo means overcoming delusion or it means teachings all the teachings of the universe we awaken to the god or the incomprehensible law of cause and effect teachings that dispel delusion i am anthony l elmer president and founder of the proud black buddhist world association Found myself a brand new mission to help others make a big decision. We bring to you a snooze for religion. It's not the religion that you expect. It's all about the law that calls and effect. The virtue to the middle of the call of teaching. We do a lot of wisdom preaching. No more life with any drama. We change the words and change our karma. We bring to you the new Buddha way. We bring to you the new way to pray. After long prayers, a lot of meditation. I bring to you the Buddhist conversation. We can change our human relations. We bring to you the culture integration. It's about peace and love and changing situation. This turning in Buddhism makes a lot of sense. It's about self development in the life. I made the decision to join the Buddha way. I joined the Buddha said, call it and say, Buddha's new to America and like a tree. What does the word of the child and me? The fortune to the middle of the call of the teacher. A different learning from a Christian preacher. Buddha's religion makes a lot of sense. It's up to fill up with light and me. Becoming a Buddha's head is a good decision. Look at yourself and find the inner wisdom. The fortune to the middle of the call of the teacher. While we only have Japanese preaching, the Buddha's religion is the way to go. I will find our leader in Tokyo. I want him to move the way. Nation, I should follow him say, I no longer do it his way. Went to a temple called Taseka Chi. The courage of the temple don't relate to me. In 2014, I left the Buddha temple. I teach the Buddha, that's more simple. Little shoe man that you don't have the knowledge. I want you to check my logic. The no only way I teach Buddhism, I give the people a good rhythm. I'm not like a priest at the temple. I teach Buddhism and make it simple. You don't need a cutter to explain it. Sing it and dance in the general of the language. Don't you turn with it on the cover of the teaching? We teach the with the wisdom of preaching. We can teach the wisdom of all the only. We follow the wisdom of the that's shown it. Teach with us this we don't need a mouth. We know how to sing and rap. Let me bring some good news to you. We trust the Lord of Sutra. You don't have to practice here or after. Just do the second and sixteen chapters. You gotta have a person be in my yard. Learn that Lord of Sutra title. I'm your whole, you get cold. That's the way that you come on, go.